Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over a setup for monitoring an IP camera using a Raspberry Pi, and none of this is actually connected to the internet. So this is a standalone system. So you could use this at a cabin in the woods. You could use it at an apartment complex to say monitor the swimming pool and not have it connected to any centralized network. So I'm going to go over the hardware here. And here I have an Amcrest IP camera, and this is a PoE camera. So this gets its power and its data over this ethernet cable. You can also run power just connected directly into the camera. But this is the more convenient way to do it because then you just run one ethernet cable to your camera. And that's going into a PoE injector. So actually I'll simplify this. So if I had the camera here plugged directly into the Raspberry Pi, from a network standpoint, this is what it looks like. It just is connected from the camera to the Raspberry Pi. You put this in the middle to supply power to the camera. but you still have one network connection. So you have the network going from the camera to the Raspberry Pi, and there's no internet hooked up to this. So you do need internet to set this up initially, but once you have it set up, it needs no internet. And then this has power going into it, and it has HDMI that would go into a monitor. So the way I'm setting this up, it'll have a read-only system. So you could have this on, say, a timer switch that would turn it on and off at certain times of the day. And when it would turn on, it would power everything up and then show your camera. And when you would shut it off, it would just turn off. And then this camera is also set up so you could actually disconnect the camera and plug it back in and it should restart itself. Uh, should start the camera back up. So I'm not actually using this Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4. I think the 3 would work just as well. The Raspberry Pi 4 is connected up over here and it has a bunch of wires plugged into it. Just for showing this, I thought this would be easier. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm booted into Raspberry Pi OS, and this is the desktop version, and I've actually tested this with Raspberry Pi OS Lite, which is the one that's just a console. It's just easier to set up on the desktop because I'll be referencing my web page with all the commands I need to type in. So I'll go to a web browser, I'll go to my website, and I'll have this link in the description. When I mentioned this earlier, but I forgot to actually do it, is this needs internet access, so I just plugged it into my internet. I had it plugged into the camera. There we go. So this is monitoring an IP camera using a Raspberry Pi, no internet. I'll click on that. And this has all of the commands I need to type in. So I'll open up a terminal. The first thing I'm going to do is disable screen blanking. So I'll type in sudo space raspy dash config. I'll go to display options. I'll go down to screen blanking. It says, would you like to enable it? I'll say no. And then I'll hit OK and finish. I'll say I don't want to reboot now. Next, I want to update the system. So I'll copy this line. So sudo apt update will download the package list and dist upgrade will update the packages. I'll hit enter here. And then this might take a minute for this to complete. Okay, that's complete. Next we want to install OMX player and DNS mask. So I'll copy this next line. I'll paste that down here. Okay, so that's completed. So next I want to disconnect it from the network. So I'm going to unplug the Raspberry Pi from the internet and I'll plug it into the PoE injector. So now I have a network set up between the Raspberry Pi and the camera. So I'm using the Amcrest camera, but this should work with other brands of camera that have an RTSP URL. I do have a username and password set up on the camera and it's set up for DHCP for the network access. So now that I've disconnected the Raspberry Pi from the internet, I don't want to plug it back onto my network because we're going to be setting up a DHCP server on it and it could screw up my regular network. I should also say that this web page that I loaded, I don't want to hit refresh on it because it won't be able to refresh. And I could probably save it on here I don't know if that's possible on here, but I imagine that's a feature. So next we have setup static IP address on ETH0. So I'll copy this line over and I don't need this non-breaking space. I'll remove that before I do the final publish. So if we scroll down here, we want to look for interface ETH0 and it should be commented out. So we have the example static IP configuration. So I will just delete the pound sign and then I want to go to static IP address, the next line, and do the same thing. So I've uncommented these two lines out. So the static IP address of the Raspberry Pi will be 192.168.0.10. So to save this, I'll type Control O to save and Control X to exit. So I want to restart the DHCP CD service. So I'll copy this line and paste it into my terminal. 
So now I can type IP space A, and it can take a minute for this to update sometimes. So we see here the IP address is not the 192.168.0.10. So I'll run this again, and here we have it updated. So now we want to move the current DNS mask settings. So I'll paste that in here. So we have dnsmask.conf, and we're going to just change that to dnsmask.conf.orig. And we could delete this or override it. I find it easy just to copy it in case I ever need to reference it in the future. So now we're going to create a new one. So I'll copy this next line. It's sudo nano etsy dnsmask.conf. And we'll copy this next set of text and paste that in. So we're saying on interface to ETH0, we're going to set up a DHCP server, and our range will be from 192.168.0.11 to 192.168.0.254. The net mask is 255.255.255.0, and the leases are for 24 hours. I don't remember exactly what this address line does, but that is our static IP on the interface. I should have looked that up before I made the video, but I, I've used this in a previous configuration. So the last line here is DHCP lease file. So when the Raspberry Pi issues an IP address to a device like the IP camera. It will enter that in this dnsmask.leases file. So I'll type control O to save, control X to exit, and I want to start and enable the DNS mask service. So I'll copy these three lines. So we have sudo system ctl daemon reload, sudo system ctl enable DNS mask, and sudo system ctl start DNS mask. So this will start our DHCP server. So now you can connect the IP camera. I have mine connected already, and I don't know if it will get an IP address or not. So we have this monitor DHCP leases. I'll copy this, paste it in here. So when we say tail-f, what that will do is it will read the end of a file, and then if anything is added to that file, it will display on the screen. So that is not there right now. And I've had this problem before. Let me go up here and restart DNS mask and see if that helps. Okay, that seemed to do it. I don't know why it didn't create that file the first time. So now I'm going to, I'll unplug the camera and then I'll plug it back in and hopefully that will request an IP address and that should show up here. It can take a minute, so I'll probably speed the video up. Okay, so we have an IP address for the camera here. It's 192.168.0.56. So I'm going to copy this MAC address and the IP address here. I'll type Control C to exit out of here. I'll clear my screen. So the next thing here, we want to add the host entry to the DNS mask. So I can't copy and paste this next line without removing the IP address and MAC address from my clipboard. So I'll just type this in, sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash DNS mask dot com. I'll hit enter. I'll go to the bottom line here. And if we see down here, we want DHCP dash host equals DHCP dash host equals, and I'll paste in my clipboard. And this is almost ready to go. We just need a comma between these two. So I'll put that comma in there. So what this is going to do is this is going to always assign this IP address to a device that has this MAC address. So if this system gets rebooted, it will always assign the IP address properly. So I'm just showing one way to do this. You could actually take the host name of the camera and put it in here. That could work. I haven't tried that, but I'm guessing it would work. You could set a static IP address up on the camera ahead of time, and then you wouldn't have to do this at all. So I'm just showing one way to do it. It may not be the best way. So certainly feel free to experiment with this if you think you have a better way to do it. So I'll type Control O to save. Control X to exit. So next I'll restart the DNS mask service. Looks like we have an error here. Let's see if I typed something wrong. Okay, I typed DCHP. So it's a good idea to pay attention to error messages because they can catch things like that. Let's try that again. So next I'm going to view the IP camera. So that's this next line, it's OMX player. And this will be different depending on your camera. So you'll want to Google if you're not using an Amcrest camera, but this tends to work for Amcrest cameras and it probably works for other cameras too. And there's an error here with this ampersand. I'll fix that in the final. And I want to change the username, password, and IP address. So once I have this information in, I'll hit enter. And we should see the camera. There we go. So this camera is upside down right now because it's set up to mount on a ceiling and it's sitting on my desk. But if you use this camera normally, it would look right.
So I'll hit Q. Let me actually go back real quick and we'll check something out here. So one issue you have with this not being connected to the internet is the time will be wrong. So right now it's April 29th and this says it's March 25th. I'm actually surprised it's even close. So you probably want to turn the time off on your camera config before you start this whole thing. So I'll clear my screen here. Actually, I do want this command. So I'll copy it since it worked. And now we want to create a camera service. I'll type sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash system d forward slash system forward slash camera dot service. I'll hit enter. So now I want to copy and paste this in, but I have my camera URL here, so I'll paste that in real quick. And then I'll copy and paste my service. And now I'll copy and paste my URL again. I'll go to exec start, and I want to delete this OMX player and put in the actual stream. And then I can get rid of this top command. I think I can type control K to remove that line. So this is a standard systemd service. A couple of things to point out here is we have our URL here and we have the full path to OMX player. And then under that we have restart always and restart seconds is 10. So if this thing fails, it will try and restart it after 10 seconds. And then up here we have after network.target. So this says load this after the network is loaded. So I'll type control X to get out of here. So now we want to enable and start the camera. So that's these next two lines. We have pseudo system CTL enable camera, pseudo system CTL start camera. So once I do this, it's going to load the camera and the camera is loaded now. So I still have some configuration to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the camera here from the ethernet and that will make it go away. This will take a few seconds before it clears out of here. So I'll scroll down a little more. And the final thing is to set up a read only file system. So I'll type pseudo space raspy dash config. I'll hit enter. I'll go to performance options. I'll go to overlay file system. I'll hit OK. For some reason that is not wanting to install. Interesting. When I first tried this, I ran it on the Raspberry Pi Lite, which was just the command line only, and this worked. I don't know why it's not working on the graphical version. So I should be done with this website here. So I can close it down. So now I can reboot this. I'll type sudo space reboot, and I'll connect up the camera and hit enter. And when this reboots, it should bring the camera up automatically. Okay, it's booted the Raspberry Pi. The camera should come up any minute now. There we go. So I don't have any easy way to exit out of here, aside from unplugging the camera. So I'm going to try that overlay file system again. Go to performance options, overlay file system. Okay, it's working now, it seems. So if you reboot the Raspberry Pi, then you can set up the overlay file system. So what this will allow you to do is just power off the Raspberry Pi and then power it on and it will bring up the camera. So I'll say OK here. It says, would you like the boot partition to be right protected? I'm going to say no. You could say yes. I'll say OK. I'll go to finish and it asks if I want to reboot now. And I'm just going to say no. So now I'll connect the camera back up. OK. So that took a little bit of time because the camera actually has to boot up and then it has to issue a IP address and connect up. So I have my camera here. I'm going to actually test the latency here. So I have my hand here, I'll put my finger up, and you'll see it goes up on the camera there. Let's see if I can get a better angle. So I've measured this to be about 1.6 seconds. I don't know the exact latency, so it's just under two seconds. So again, if I want to get to the Raspberry Pi, I'll just unplug the camera. Now, if I want to tweak anything or change anything, you have to turn off the overlay file system. So you go into the raspy-config like we did earlier and go to the performance options and overlay file system and turn it off, make your changes, and then re-enable it. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.